grand evening. How are you guys doing this Friday evening? Shabbat Shalom. I hope that you guys are having a safe, great uh, Sabbath, if you celebrate Sabbath or Friday evening. Probably commuting home, on your way home, maybe home already. Um, I want to talk to you guys about something that's very close and dear to my heart. Um, as you know, I recently went on a mission trip. I was blessed to go on a mission, yes, a missions trip to Lagos in Nigeria. Um, I went to different states in Nigeria and I just got to uh, get my feet wet, if you will. Step foot on the continent for the first time after 52 years of living. Um, it was one of the most incredible, humbling experiences of my life. Okay. Um, I got to see some things I never thought I would see. Um, some beautiful, glorious things. Um, Nigeria is a beautiful, beautiful country. Uh, and there are some beautiful people in Nigeria. There are some awesome, spiritual, wonderful, loving, caring, powerful people in Nigeria. I, I, I was tremendously blessed. Um, I also got married to a wonderful man. I love you, baby. And I married it to a wonderful family. I love you, family. Um, and it was just an incredible experience all around. One of the things, however, I noticed, or a few things I noticed, um, and it's even become more obvious and in the forefront to me as I've come back to the States, is the lack of support to the continent. Um, when I was on the mission field, we, we gave out medicine to village people who were sick or who needed it. Um, a lot of people needed malaria medicine, um, vitamins. You know, they had some older people out there. They had pregnant women out there need their prenatal vitamins. Older people need vitamins. Um, children need vitamins. Um, and just we get food was given out, clothes given out. And I did get to preach a word. I wasn't really expecting to, but I did. And um, but that was an humbling experience as well. But the need of the people is what stood out so powerful to me and what stands out even today. Um, there's such one thing I've noticed, and it's very frustrating for me because now I've seen the needs with my own two eyes front and center of the people on the continent. And yes, it's true. We don't know what poverty is, okay? We think someone in a shelter is poor here, and they're not. The people in the shelter are richer than a lot of people on the continent, okay? They, most people in the shelter, you have access. You have a shelter, you have a roof over your head. You have food to eat. You have clothes on your back. It may not be the food that you want. It may not be the residence that you want. It may not be the clothes that you want to wear. But you have access to those support services. And, and you're not literally... And some people are on the street, granted. But I'm going to put it out there, and some people won't like me, but a lot of people here in the States, if they're on the street homeless, it's because they refuse to follow a program. They refuse to go to the places that do offer the help. And there are places that do offer help. May not be here in Knoxville. Knoxville is not the place where you want to be to be homeless. And I tell people that all the time. You know, go to a, if Knoxville doesn't offer support services for homeless people, you know, we can pick it and say you're discriminating against the homeless all day long. But until you actually take up the money and open up the shelters until you, you know, the landlords start wanting to work with 
people who are mentally ill, people who are recovering drug addicts, people who are ex-cons, yes, um, women that are fleeing domestic violence situations, people that are at risk need shelter too. But until the people that's hoarding whole streets of properties decide that they want to help the less fortunate, there's nothing that could be done about it. So you know what? Get on the Greyhound bus, get on the mega bus, and go somewhere else where there are services and there are other places that do offer. And that's what they want. They want you to leave Knoxville because the Knoxville does not want to deal with its poor. Now, mind you, I wasn't going to talk too much about Knoxville, but I got to go here. 42%, last I checked, Almost half the population, African-American population in Knox County, lives below the so-called poverty level. Okay? They don't want poverty here. They don't want to have, they only want to deal with the poverty around this time of year so they can make themselves feel wonderful and Christ-like. Because what would Christ do, right? Anyway, I'm talking to my people now because I... I can't deal with anybody else, but my people, we don't, we, we have the resources, but we're selfish. We're very, very selfish. We're very self-seeking. We rather take care of our house and make sure our nails are done and our feet are done and our hair is laid just so perfectly. And we're riding in the best. We, we got to make sure we get our weed. And I don't smoke weed. I'm just saying us because for effect. You know, we got to make sure we got our stuff so that we can be straight. But the dime bag of weed you just bought could feed a family in Africa. But I know you don't care about your people. You want to talk like you woke. Huh? You want to talk like you care about the, Af- the kind of people on the continent. But you're selfish. You're selfish. You're just selfish. Our people don't get together to do anything for our people here. So, no, we're not going to do it in on the continent. And in Nigeria in particular, where it's been branded, Nigeria has been nation profiled, not just racially profiled, nation profiled to be one of the most uh, scammers, one of the biggest countries that scam people. In the whole world. How did they get that label and that stereotype? I looked it up three different resources. Three. And you know which country is actually, is documented proof, has more scams on the internet, online fraud, than any other country in the world? Indonesia. The Philippines. Look it up. Rome, Romania, Pakistan, not Nigeria. But what is the the stereotype that's going? Uh, Nigeria, you can't send no money to Nigeria because the, the whole country they're full of scammers. That's what y'all. That's what they've led y'all to believe. Now I'm not saying there are not any scam any scammers in Nigeria. Of course they are. But it's not nearly as as widespread as they want to make it out to be. And I got another question for you. Why is it that even though Indonesia has more fraud online than any other country in the world, including Nigeria, look it up. Now, in Indonesia and the Philippines are next door neighbors and they're pretty much considered one because they're the same, they come from the same bloodline of people in Asia, okay? They share the same border, okay? Yet, how, how many call centers have outsourced their jobs? Call centers that are headquartered right here in the United States of these Americas have outsourced their jobs to the Philippines where there's supposed to be so much fraud in Indonesia. But that so you can you can send American jobs to Indonesia and the Philippines where there's so much so-called fraud and help those people to have jobs so that they can take care of themselves. But you can't outsource those jobs to Nigeria or South Africa, Cape Town, Freetown, 
Sierra Leone. Explain why. Why is that? Why is that? How many times have you picked up a phone and, and spoke to a customer service rep and you got somebody from the Philippines, you got somebody from Indonesia, huh? You got somebody from India. I saw India on one of on one of the statistics as having online fraud. So why you can't outsource the jobs to Nigeria? Why is it that Nigerians are are, are having to like struggle? And the sad part is not only are you not trying to give the Nigerians jobs, not only have you branded them and stereotyped them that, that oh you can't trust Nigerians, you can't give Nigerians the money because they're scammers. But even the churches in Nigeria, there are legitimate churches, there are people of the most high yah that are in Nigeria, that love the Most High, that are not trying to scam anybody. They are not false prophets. They're not trying to steal from anybody. They're just trying to help people. They're trying to do the work of the kingdom. But they're not well known because they don't model after the American church. I said it, and I'm I'm not gonna say it again. They don't model after the American church. They hold true to their culture, to the word of the Most High, and because of that, they're being labeled a stereotype. So now, a ministry in Nigeria, you can't get no donations from, from Americans because Americans think that Nigerians, everything in Nigeria is a scam. I tried to send money to, to, to pay for scholarships for girls to go to school over there, and I had a really difficult time. Do you want to know why? Because the, 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 the ministries there and the... Uh, and the people. America does not want you to send money to Nigeria. They make it very, very difficult to do so. Even the online donation sites that are set up to make it easy so that you can give to foreigners, they make it most difficult for Nigerians. They don't want U.S. dollars to go to, 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 to Nigeria. Why is that? Why? That should not have been so difficult. A lot of the um, ministries that take don online donations won't deal with Nigeria. Why is that? But you'll deal with ministries elsewhere. You could get a PayPal anywhere and, you, and operate it, but on the continent. Why? And so you make it hard to, to donate and, and see to the needs of the people. And there are legitimate needs. I've been boots on the ground in Nigeria. There are legitimate needs in on the continent. And they make it impossible. They make it really, really difficult to help our people. Why? Why? I want to know why. You don't make it difficult to give to anybody else. Is that racial profiling? Is it racially motivated? That ought not be. We need to find a way to help our people. And I'm talking to my people. I contacted 25 mega... African American, predominantly African American mega ministries and ask them for a donation to help out with the mission and not one response. Why is that? You have the money. You are a mega ministry. Why do you not have mission? Why do you not do missions? I'm trying to understand. Help me understand. This is just part one of my rant. Come back for more if you dare.